Ryan set to battle in tomorrow's main event. Vanderlei Silva and Brian Stan. They're moving on up to light heavyweight, that is, where both have previously held titles. For Silva, the move up is a return to his pride fighting days. For Stan, it's a chance to take down the axe murderer in Tokyo, which was too enticing to pass up. Hello, everyone. I am Karen Bryan here on stage A of our Fox studio in Los Angeles, California. Beside me is the man who is going to challenge John Jones for the UFC light heavyweight title, Mr. Chael Sonnen. And next to him is a fighter making his first analyst appearance with us here, Mr. Michael Bisbing. And Michael, how's it feel behind the desk? Well, first off, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, obviously, I'm no stranger to the octagon, but when I'm not competing, I watch the fights at home with my kids. So it's a pleasure to be here in studio and uh, talk about a few of the fights. Very nice. I tell you, I'm pumped to have you, Karen. I'm pumped to be with you. But fans at home, I'm even more excited to see you all because we've got a great show. We got Vandalay Silva taking on Brian Stan. Vandalay gets to return not only to Japan, where he once went 22-0, and 22-fight win streak, guys, that's incredible, but he also gets to return to his weight class of 205 pounds. He's going to take on your last opponent in Brian Stan. What do you see here? Well, obviously, I'm looking forward to that matchup. I'm a middleweight fighter. There's four fantastic middleweight fighters competing on this event. But for me, Stefan Struve and Mark Hunt is the fight I'm looking forward to. Obviously, you've got the tallest guy, the shortest guy. It's going to be exciting. It's definitely a great card, and fight fans everywhere rejoiced when they heard about tomorrow's main event. You can expect to see some fireworks as Vanderlei Silva takes on fellow heavy-handed striker Brian Stan. And Chael, I've been a Vanderlei fan for years, but how would you describe his fighting style to someone who's never, ever seen him fight? Pure aggressiveness. Look, Vanderlei's got uh, a lot of intentions, guys, and they're all bad. He wants to hurt everything. If he kicks you, he wants to hurt your leg. If he punches you, he's aiming to knock you out, and he makes no secret about it. He comes in that ring intense, fired up in shape and ready to fight no mistake about it this guy wants to fight and the second the referee turns him loose he starts throwing those punches every now and then that reckless abandon just turns into recklessness that's what he needs to be careful of tomorrow night well and listen up michael obviously you fought both of these guys before more recently brian stan so how does the former marine corps captain compare to somebody like vanderlei well as chael said Vanderlei is a fighter, and Brian is exactly the same way. He's going to come out of there swinging hard and fast. He punches hard, he kicks hard. I don't think either of them are going to go for a takedown. We're not going to see a grappling match. We're going to see an all-out war, a slugfest. It's going to be fun. Well, and Vanderlei, people should know, is a true eight-point striker. So look for that in the fight. Well, with more on our main event, we're going to send it to the fourth member of our team, Gareth A. Davis, who is on the ground live in Tokyo, Japan. Gareth, what have you got? Both Vanderlei Silver and Brian Stan have admitted that it's been a bonus that their fight here at the Saitama Super Arena has been made at light heavyweight. It's meant an easy weight cut for the decorated former Marine officer and one of MMA's most popular soldiers. Brian Stan told me that the bereavement of last year and the shoulder injury has put 2012 behind him and in 2013 he's making a title run at middleweight. Vanderlei Silver, meanwhile, has told me that he thought for a moment that he uses BJJ black belt to beat Stan, but then he said to me, no, I'm gonna stand and bang with Stan. As a footnote, there was an earthquake here early this morning, 4.8 on the Richter scale, and hotel staff were scared by the banging and tremors. They thought it was Vanderlei Silva on another pad session. Brian Stan, you have been warned. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, Gareth. You give out safe. warnings all of a sudden. My goodness. Well, we're going to see more of Gareth during the live way, and along with Jalen and Michael popping up from time to time with some interesting notes about our UFC on Fuel TV 8 competitors. But right now, it is time for our Twitter poll question of the night. Which fight are you most looking forward to? Vote using hashtag SilvaStan. Hashtag Hunt Struve. Ooh, I want to see that one right there. Yeah, we've got two more. Hashtag Okami Lombard and hashtag Gomi Sanchez. It is going to be one great night of fights on tap from Japan. I'm excited for all of these, and we're going to have your results later on in the show. Well, coming up after the break, it's scale tipping time in Tokyo. Silva, Stan, Struve, Hunt, and the rest of the competitors on this stacked fuel show will weigh in. John Anik is on the call when we return. This is the UFC weigh-in show on Fuel TV. The UFC weigh-in on Fuel TV is brought to you by Harley Davidson, united by independence.
Was it great to be here at the world famous Saitama Super Arena? Our matchmaker is Sean Shelby. Reed Harris is here. Our new Octagon girl is Sue Jung Lee. Mark Fisher, our managing director for UFC Asia. Minnesota's finest, Michael Mersh, and the inimitable B Dub, Burt Watson, is here as well. Thank you all for coming out. We begin in the welterweight division. Marcelo Guimarães versus Sean Gu Lim. First fight into the scale is Sean Gu Lim. Tuesday at 9, Tuesdays get tough. It's a house divided when Team Sun and Team Jones face off. Who will strike first and advance to the next round? Find out on The Ultimate Fighter, Tuesday at 9 Eastern, only on FX. 171. 171 for Sean Q. Lim. And his opponent, Marcelo Guimaraes. for Marcelo Guimaraes. Bantamweight division, Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres versus Kung Ho Kong. Creative skills know no bounds. Not only is he creating an organic garden at home that's self-sustaining with solar panels, he's even reading in the evenings at open mic sessions with his own poetry in Miami. Caceres. All right, moving on now to the lightweight division. Chris Marcelo versus Kazuki Tokudome. Sunday, NASCAR heads to the Phoenix International Raceway where Jimmy Johnson will look for his fifth win in the desert. 
Fox Sports exclusive coverage of the Subway Fresh Fit 500 begins next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. 155. 155 for Kazuki Tokudome. And his opponent, Cristiano Marcelo. Weight division, Takeya Mizugaki versus Brian Kid Lightning Caraway. Kid Lightning Brian Caraway has had to take a back seat as Misha Tate has emerged as one of the principal women fighters in the world. She's cornering him here, and then they're going back to into her training camp for her to face Kat Zingano in April. One thirty five for Brian Caraway and his opponent, Takeya Mizugaki. comes in the middleweight division, Ricky Fakuda versus Brad Tavares. First fighter to the scale, BT, Brad Tavares. I can reveal that Brad Tavares does have a fighting name. It's marvelous. It was given to him by his friends. He's been watching UFC events with his father, Danny, in Hawaii from the age of five.
And now we get to the main card for the UFC on Fuel TV. Our first bout in the welterweight division, the stun gun, Dong Hyun Kim versus Seer, the great Bahadur Zada. Siar Bahardazada moved from Afghanistan at the age of 15 as war refugees. He speaks seven languages, Pashtun, Afghani, French, Spanish. Do I need to go on? Gun Kim comes to us with a 16 and two record. Those only two losses were to Damian Maya and Carlos Condit. He's beat TJ Grant, he's beat Nate Diaz. This guy has quietly amassed one of the most impressive records. He's also one of the longest guys in this weight class at six foot and one inch tall. One for Dong Kyun Kim. That is a big fight, ladies and gentlemen, to kick off the main card. How about a hand for the welterweight, Seer Bahadurzada and Dong Kyun Kim. Our next bout is in the featherweight division. Mizuto Hirota versus Ronnie Yaya. Tuesday on FX, it's a new episode of The Ultimate Fighter. On Friday, March 15th, catch the live UFC 158 weigh-ins with GSP and Nick Diaz on Fuel TV. On Saturday, don't miss the UFC 158 prelims on FX. Fox Sports is your home for live, free UFC action all year long. Forty-six. 146 for Ronnie Yaya. And his opponent, Mizuto Hirota. Lightning Lombard, or the Poison Dwarf, as I like to call him. This Olympic-level judo player is a nasty son of a gun. Knockout power in the left of my hand, and a hard guy to take down. Thank you. 
186 for Hector Lombard. And his opponent, Yushin Okami. Yushin Okami, my former opponent and current teammate. Guys, my mother almost shot Yushin Okami. And yes, you heard this correctly. If you tune in tomorrow to the pre-fight show, I will tell you the whole story. favorite and crowd pleaser Diego Sanchez tells me that he's reached a new maturity. He knew it when he was sparring with Diego Brandao in preparation for this camp when he says he sat back and picked his punches carefully. He'll need that against Takenori Gomi. He has one hour to cut the final two pounds. And his opponent, the fireball kid, Takanori Gomi. Takanori Komi. What a fight in the lightweight division, Diego Sanchez and Takanori Komi. And now we get to our co main event in the heavyweight division, Mark Super Samoan Hunt versus the skyscraper, Stefan Screw. When Stefan Struve beat Stipe Miocic five months ago, he was an emotional wreck afterwards when he revealed that his father, Yap, had cancer. He told us this week that his cancer is in remission and his father is getting better day by day. Mark Hunt, the Super Samoan. The shortest guy in the UFC heavyweight division, but one of the hardest punches. The former K1 World Grand Prix champion is no stranger to knocking people out.
Vanderlei Silva is one of the most feared fighters in the sport. For a long time, he dominated Pride's middleweight division. I've been world champion there for six years, and I have an opportunity for fights for the best guys in the world over there. Brian Stan is one of the most aggressive strikers in the UFC. He fights a very fast pace. He's always in incredible condition. And he can push that pace for three hard rounds. I come into this fight very confident, but at the same time, I come into this fight with a lot of respect. To the body again. I love how he mixes it up. I have a tough fight on my hands. But with, with, with Vanderlei Silva, it's a little bit different. You're fighting a guy that you've watched for years, that you've looked up to. He's a really good opponent, you know, and, and uh, I saw his fights, his style, he, he fights like me, he fights in stand-up, and I know we, we, we're gonna have a great show over here. This is a, a very dangerous fight for both guys. Either one of these guys could end this fight with a flashlight in their face asking what happened. I see this fight being very violent. Oh, he's oh, back on this! Vanderlei doesn't know any other way to fight. It's why he's one of the most beloved fighters in the history of the sport. Both guys have one strategy, step forward and blast. Wow! If that guy hits anybody, they go night night. There is no question about this guy's power, man. Somebody's gonna get knocked out. First fighter to the scale, the All-American. Brian Stan, Brian the All-American. The former WEC, light heavyweight champion of the world. Brian is one of the most ferocious strikers in the UFC. A testament to that fact, he has the third most knockdowns in the middleweight division. Two oh six for Brian Stan and his opponent, the ex murderer Vanderlei Silva. Wow, listen to the reception of that crowd. They love Vanderlei Silva in Japan. You know, Vanderlei Silva refers to himself as the most popular fighter in the UFC, and you know what, guys? He just might be. Take it away.